Now let's move on to actually executing code on the cluster. For this, we need to consider Slurm. Slurm is a scheduler. Each cluster needs a scheduler because it's a piece of software that decides which program gets run where and also when. So in other terms, you can think of Slurm as a Tetris program. People want to execute their computation and this program needs to decide when and where to run the code. You can interact with Slurm via the command line. Three commands that I always use in my daily life are sinfo, so actually figuring out the current state of the cluster, srun, so running code live and interacting with the code and changing code, and sbatch. sbatch is used for longer computations, so for instance, if I want to train a neural network for a couple of hours, I would use sbatch. So before we run as info, let's take a deeper look at the cluster and where we actually are and see which hardware we have available. So to bring this to the overarching picture of the simplified network overview. So far, we've SSH'd into the front end and got some code on there and also some data. Now we'll look at the compute nodes. The compute nodes are divided into partitions. Partitions are groups of nodes that have similar properties. This can be either hardware, for instance, like the CPU or the GPU partitions. They can be also only visible or usable by certain user groups, or also only used for certain types of computations, so short or long computational jobs. Let's have a look what we have there on greater for the GPUs. You can find the documentation under hlrnde doc display path GPU usage. Here you find all GPU partitions that are available to the public, which is greater, greater shared, greater interactive, and greater preemptible. Most importantly, you'll see that all of these partitions have their own unique purpose. And all of them have their own nodes, although a node can also belong to several partitions. One of the partitions that you most frequently interact with is the greater shared partition. This partition is for all jobs that take a longer time. So for instance, training a neural network. We also have a partition that's there for shorter computations. This is the greater interactive partition. So, for instance, if you just want to test whether your code is compatible with a certain CUDA version, or if you just want to debug, then please go ahead and use the Greater Interactive Partition. We can also have a look at these partitions in a more visual way. So here you would see one node of the Greater Shared Partition. You see that it contains multiple CPUs and four GPUs. And when you target this partition, so if you take this for your computation, you can get a whole or even multiple GPUs. On the other hand, we have the greater interactive partition. We made this partition so that you can also get only slices of the GPUs. So if you don't need the whole computational capacity of an A100, you can use them for debugging. Let's look at the state of the clusters and the state of these partitions. I'm currently logged into the uh, glog n9, so just the normal front end that we always use. With S info, I can get an overview of all possible, like all available partitions, which can be quite overwhelming. So I could also use sinfo with some additional parameters and only look at our GPUs. What we can see here is the actual nodes, also the CPUs that they have, some memory, and also some other parameters like SSD or whether Tor is on, Tor off, whether you have internet, and you can see here as our shared partition and also our interactive partition. Moreover, you can also see some nodes with sinfo-r that are currently maybe under maintenance or currently not usable. 
And he can also see the reason. So for instance, some nodes are in the repair or, well, some nodes are just getting updated. I always find S info helpful to see the current state of the cluster. And if I go to a new cluster, it's an easy command that I can just run and see what's available there for me to use. 